So we have a very special class for you today. First, I'll introduce myself. I'm Christy Brissett. I am a registered dietitian. And I'm Jeremy Capone. I'm the wellness chef here at Elixir. And we are partnering with the Canadian Cancer Society today. And we have special guest here joining us up behind the counter. This is Tracy Torchetti. She's the director of the Cancer Information Department at Canadian Cancer Society. Great, thanks Christy. Uh, it's so great to be back at Elixir Kitchen. We had a lot of fun last year. Um, so last year we updated our booklet called Eating Well When You Have Cancer. And uh, the booklet, uh, we offer tips to help you manage side effects and uh, lessen cancer symptoms related to uh, uh, how you eat and, and the effect of your eating. Um, it also helps you think about menus, food preparation, uh, and food shopping. Uh, the booklet includes recipes from cancer survivors, caregivers, and society volunteers. Um, and Jeremy and Christy are going to be preparing one of those recipes today from the booklet, as well as two other recipes that were sent to us online from cancer survivors after our last visit. Um, so to get your copy of Eating Well When You Have Cancer, uh, we have some here in the room, or for those online, um, you can go to cancer.ca to download a copy or to order your own print booklet. Uh, and of course, we are interested in your eating well recipes. So if you have a recipe or two to share, we'd love for you to send them to us at recipes at cancer.ca. So we're gonna start off, this is, um, again, a delicious uh, recipe submitted by Cat Survivor. Um, you know, fall, even though it's beautiful outside, we know that fall is around the corner. Uh, which is a good thing in the kitchen because we're going to be introducing a lot more of these guys, so a lot more squash. Um, and this is a, a great, you know, sort of staple recipe to use uh, that squash. We're going to make a really nice butternut squash soup. Um, so great uh, recipe to sort of have, you know, in your arsenal, uh, really quick, really easy to put together. That's right. And today's class is all about trying to boost energy and protein in your recipes. So how can you take a, a basic healthy recipe, prepare it for the whole family, and then if there is someone in the family who's going through cancer treatment or even after treatment is struggling to take in enough calories, take in enough protein, then we're gonna share with you some ways that you can help boost things up. So we're gonna start off, I mean the hardest part, I think with this recipe is getting through the squash. Um, who has difficulties cutting through Squash at home, a lot of people, <laughs> yes. Um, Can't we make it in a flat shape so it doesn't roll around? Exactly, on it's rolling around, it's harder. Um, you can find some grocery stores will have it pre-prepped, pre-chopped for you. That's an easy way to sort of get through that prep. Um, there's a couple other techniques. If you do um, find it a little easier to get through the squash, you know, you can just cut it in half. And you can use any squash, that's another thing too, is this is calling for butternut squash. Uh, but more and more grocery stores are carrying all different types. So this is actually one of my new favorites. It's buttercup squash. See the inside, the flesh? Super vibrant, really nice and orange, really sweet, delicious. Um, so you can switch it up a little bit. This recipe will work with you know, butternut, buttercup, amber, all different, even pumpkin, if you want to use pumpkin. Really delicious. And in terms of nutrition, that bright orange color, they all share that, and it means that they're all an excellent source of beta carotene, which turns into vitamin A. It's a powerful antioxidant, which may help to lower risk of cancer and other chronic diseases and boost your immune system. So uh, to prepare this recipe, cut the squash in half. You can put it on a baking sheet. I usually line it with parchment paper, throw it into the oven, uh, 375 for about 35, 45 minutes until it's nice and soft and roasted. Now, if you can't get through the cutting in half of the squash, which can be difficult, there's an even easier way. Take it whole. You're gonna poke it a few times with a knife or a fork just to let the steam out. And whole, I'm gonna put it onto the baking sheet. Same temperature, it's gonna take a little bit longer though. It's gonna take probably closer to an hour, but I don't have to work through it this way. And when you take it out, I'll show you what it looks like. So you're gonna have this really sort of caramelized looking squash. Um, and, you know, again, this was from all. And Tracy, I'll get you to cut through it now. Okay. Show you how much easier. You could, oh, I could even give her a butter knife it and it would probably cut through because it's so nice and soft at this point. Right, it so, really is so easy. Literally yeah. like 
so much easier, right? Yeah, to very, get through. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, work out the pipes beforehand. <laughs> um, you know, really nice and soft. But just by squeezing it, you can see that that's the flesh coming out. Delicious. So from here, I would scoop out the seeds, and then just take the rest and put it into my pot. So really, really simple, great way to prepare the squash. If you guys don't mind, we'll help you scoop. Start okay. scooping that flesh out here, and we'll continue with the rest of the recipe. This one's a little tiny. This is our buttercup spot. It didn't shrink, sure. didn't shrink <laughs> in size. Uh, we actually, we, we grew our own squash this year uh, at our garden. So we do have a, a small garden as well. It's all volunteer run. And we grew buttercup squash this year. Um, some of them turned out nice and big. Some of them were really, really tiny. But still nice and delicious. delicious. And these ones, uh, we squeeze in half. And you can sort of see, you know, just squeezing it out just like a beautiful, beautiful color uh, and flavor. Uh, squash is a great ingredient you can use in savory and sweet dishes. So it's one of those things, if you know, if you have a few on hand, roast them all, use what you need, and then you can freeze the rest. It freezes really, really well. So for our soup, it's very simple. We have uh, our pot here, large soup like pot. Take over. Um, <laughs> we have a little bit of olive oil. Um, this is not, you know, your extra virgin olive oil, just a, a regular light olive oil because we're going to heat it up a little bit. Um, you don't want to heat up the very nice extra virgin olive oil. Um, it has a low smoking point, which means it burns a lot faster um, than like a light olive oil or even like a grapeseed oil. So try to stick to those oils. Um, and a little bit of onion, garlic, and some thyme. Very simple. You can add whatever herbs you like. Rosemary is a nice one. Mm -hmm. what, what sort of herbs do you like? Uh, I love all the herbs. I love all sage. Herbs. Sage. Sage, sage yeah. is great. beautiful squash. Sage is one that you do want to cook. It's not a nice uh, herb that's raw. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to add it during the, uh, the onion, the cooking of the onions process. And then we're going to add our squash. So I did some ahead of time as well. I'll use that one too. I didn't just get you to do that for nothing. <laughs> but we're going to add... Do you approve of our... How did we do? Our looks squash looks perfectly formed. Looks good. Really nice. <laughs> Squash is going to go into the pot with our onions. Really, really simple. And then we're going to add um, our liquid. I mean, you can have it as simple. I mean, as simple as water if you if you just want you know a light broth. But stock um, is a great way to add some more flavor. You're adding some more nutrients there too, right? That's right. Especially if you're making your own stock at home. <clears throat> uh, these hand blenders are a great way. <laughs> to save you from uh, carrying a pot of hot boiling soup to a blender. Um, and so pretty much it's an immersion blender and I'm just going straight into the pot and blending until it's nice and creamy. Now, I mean, this is up to you. You can make it you know, sort of chunky if you want, but butter and squash soup, it's so soft and delicate that it's really nice to puree all the way through and you get a really nice creamy um, consistency. Now, I'm using vegetable stock here. Um, like Christy mentioned, you know, making it from scratch is, it's, you know, it's a win-win in so many different areas. We have a great video that you can check out on our YouTube page on how to make different types of stock. So if you want to use chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, mushroom stock, um, you know, a great recipe to sort of prepare and then freeze and then you can use it whenever you need. So I'm just going to blend this until it's pureed. And then at that point, you can sort of add any sort of boosters like Chris, Chris will talk about, to, to enhance the dish. Um, has anyone made a butternut squash soup before? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy and it's you know, great for when it does get a little cooler outside. So now it's really, really nice and creamy, beautiful color. So season to taste at the end. Um, and then we're ready to serve. So pretty simple. Tracy, actually you mentioned sage before. I did. So I have some crispy sage here. Perfect. Again, like Christy said, finish it oh, any way you want. Sorry. Maybe a little bit of olive oil. <laughs> that was intentional. <laughs> maybe look at that. And then maybe a little bit of that yogurt. And you can mix it in beforehand or just like right at the end. That's it. That's our Beautiful. butternut squash soup. That's fantastic.